Welcome to Public Forum, a community outreach program produced at North Idaho College on the shores of Lake Coeur d'Alene. Featuring guests from around the globe addressing a wide variety of subjects, Public Forum serves to educate and enlighten. Please join host and moderator, political scientist Tony Stewart, in welcoming today's guest. I'm welcoming you to the part two of a two-part series on art. We're so delighted to have our guests back from last week, and this is one of our very favorite topics. And from time to time, we do shows that in some arena that deals with the arts and the humanities. And we have the owner of the Art Spirit with us, back for program number two, Steve Gibbs. And he is the owner of this beautiful Art uh, Spirit uh, Gallery in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And Steve holds a baccalaureate degree in uh, art from Montana State University. And with him is Janet Torline. And uh, she is the gallery assistant. And they both are so highly gifted. and. She uh, took art in college, and she also has worked for a long time with the Citizens Council for the Arts and the schools in our area. And uh, to Steve and to Janet, welcome back. We're so pleased to have you. I found last week so informative, and we're going to have some special showings on the program this week. Uh, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. And it's always a pleas to have Erna Reinhardt, the Director of Public Relations, as our panelist, and she will start today's questioning. Hi, Steve. Hi, Janet. Welcome back. It's great to have you again. Um, some of the viewers may not have seen our show last week, so I want to just uh, quickly um, have you talk a little bit about your gallery, the Art Spirit Gallery here in Coeur d'Alene, and, and tell the viewers um, what all is in your gallery and, and what kind of shows you have there, Steve. Okay. The Art Spirit is basically uh, there to try and promote the arts in this region. All our artists are from around the area. We represent approximately 30 artists. Each month, April through December, we strip the walls, put up a new show. Uh, this coming April, I believe, will be our 57th show, monthly showing. Uh, we have opening receptions the second Friday of each month where we get anything from 100 to 500 uh, people to come down, meet the artists, and have really great receptions. Uh, our artists that we carry are really pushing the creative en envelope. They're not really just painting for the marketplace. They're mature artists who are uh, working hard at their craft and always exploring, trying new things. Uh, we carry a wide variety from paintings to clay to glass uh, to bronze sculpture. Uh, and wh when you have a show in the gallery, are all the pieces always available for sale or not? Unless they've been sold already, they're, there you go. they're available for sale. Okay, I wondered if some artists, if they ever displayed work that they really didn't want to sell, but they wanted to show everybody. And oh. in addition to what you see up on the walls, we usually have, oh, maybe 250 pieces up on during a typical show. We have another probably three to 400 pieces in the basement in inventory that we take people down to show when they're interested in a particular artist, or that's where we uh, bring up for next month's show. Excellent. What we're going to do uh, early in the program, so our viewers will have those to appreciate as we talk to you about other questions, uh, our staff went up to your gallery and took some wonderful photographs of some of the works. And uh, Steve and Janet, we're going to show eight pieces to our viewers that may be at a distance and will not be here for a while. We hope they'll come and see your work uh, later of others. But Let's put up the first piece. Here it is, and if you'll describe each of these, and we'll take enough time to go through each one to talk about what they are. This piece is by George Carlson. It's called The Muse. George is uh, a tremendous sculptor. He's one of the real masters uh, out there in this country. He lives down on the east side of Lake Coeur d'Alene and uh, works primarily figurative. Uh, these are, this is a bronze piece. His editions are 21. This is of a dancer. He always works from life. Uh, he and his wife Pam spent three years in New York uh, during the winter time in an apartment across from Lincoln Center where the dancers, when they'd get a break, would come across and pose for him. And then he would also fly uh, some of these dancers down to his studio and uh, do finished pieces there. Uh, That's a really beautiful piece. And now we'll go to the second one. This piece is called The Graceful Dance by George. This is an interesting story in that uh, George is on the board for the Lionel Hampton Jazz Center down in Moscow. And Pam, his wife, uh, went with Lionel down to Lapway here. It was either three or four years ago 
when uh, they used to go down and give a little jazz workshop there, and then the school would reciprocate with a drumming and dance ceremony. And Pam spotted this young woman, she was a junior in uh, the school at Lapway at that time who was dancing and said, George, you're going to want to sculpt her. So he brought her up to the school, uh, or up to the studio the next year, and uh, she stayed for three days, and George uh, did a beautiful sculpture of her. It is very impressive, and the next, to the next one we'll go. Do you want? This is a local Coeur d'Alene artist, Michael Horswell. He teaches at North Idaho College, as well as producing his own studio work. Um, these are constructions, um, partly out of found objects, uh, partly out of n uh, natural objects, um, copper, brass, rawhide, wire, and they're three-dimensional. They're a relief sculpture, and he does these in a variety of shapes and colors, and uh, they're just intriguing. They're just very different and unique, and um, he's, he's really developing his, his craft. Yeah, that's really excellent. Now we'll go to the next uh, great work. This piece is by Mel McCudden. Mel will be our featured show in June this year. And Mel's just hit his 71st birthday, I believe, in January. And he's just painting the best he's painted in his life. He's just uh, turning out new pieces uh, from the studio at an incredible rate. Uh, he always has a little story with each one. Uh, they're generally a nice little twinge of humor in there. This one, the single malt scotch uh, drinker, just kind of tickles my fancy. I'm a scotch drinker and I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> so always good to identify with uh, yeah. one of the works. He, he's right. from Spokane. All right. yes. Now our next uh, artwork. This piece is by Glenn Grishkoff. Glenn is the clay and sculpture instructor down at University of Idaho in Moscow. Uh, he's been working with the brush as kind of a focus of his art for, oh, about the last 10 years now. Uh, he'll do things from small, uh, usable painting brushes uh, on up to the large decorative wall hanging pieces such as this, incorporating all different sorts of materials, always natural materials, uh, natural hair, bamboo. Uh, wood. He'll use parts of tennis rackets and spinning wheels and uh, a really wide variety of materials into some really creative work. He also will incorporate a lot of clay into pieces where he'll do uh, maybe a clay pot with brushes coming out of it and uh, tremendous work. That's right. And now the next one. Oh, this is really attractive one too. This is a huge piece. Um, I, I just measured it the other day, and I, I think it's about four feet long. Uh, Beth Kavner Stichter is uh, in residency over at the Archie Bray Foundation in Helena right now, and she is really a nationally emerging young artist um, who does these large pieces, and she does this all in an additive form, so that is a solid mass of clay when it's um, the sculpting is completed and then she slices them apart and has to hollow them all out and um, indulge in a reductive process before they can be fired and then she, she um, puts them you know back together when they're in that leather hard stage for firing and uh, she's just doing some very um, out there conceptual pieces uh, working with animal forms and exploring the um, area between the human and the animal kingdoms, where they overlap and where they separate. And she's um, already developing quite a, a collector base. Uh, yeah, that's really impressive. And now our seventh piece. <laughs> this piece is by Chris Andelman. Chris uh, just finished her residency at the Archie Bray Foundation about a year ago. Uh, she's working in a small porcelain figurines and uh, with a great sense of humor. Uh, she's been moving around doing different residency programs. She and her partner Jacob are starting a new residency program down in Joseph, Oregon area where they will by 2005 be able to offer good residencies to other clay artists from the region. She last year went over to uh, China and did a three-month residency over there and she is currently 
uh, at the Colert Foundation doing a, finishing up a residency over there where she's doing a lot of mold making work, but she does tremendous artwork. And we're going to show our last piece for today. This is a wood construction by Robert Grimes, and he first constructs these out of, um, I, I think largely maple is what he uses, and this is actually as, as large as a doorway, um, it, and it's a relief sculpture that, um, which takes him months to uh, build, and then once he's construction it, constructed it, he goes back in and uh, paints in oil. And it, they're just fascinating pieces. They have a almost surreal quality to them in their form. And, but his painterly quality, when you look at the detail of his painting, he's also a highly developed painter as well. So he, he's blending several talents in, in his pieces. And there's really nobody else doing, doing work like he is. He will be a great featured show in September. Well, those were just so impressive, and I just appreciate the fact that you would agree to let us show those on the program, and we certainly encourage people to come to your gallery, but some people who can, for whatever the reason, may be a great distance away, you've shared beyond your gallery through this program to them, and, and we deeply appreciate that, and with that, we'll let Erna continue the questioning. I'm still intrigued with how, how you get these pieces into your gallery, so I just, I want to just take that one step further, and it looks like you have in that um, display of photos, there were artists from Washington, Idaho, Montana, maybe Oregon as well. Mm -hmm. So you definitely have a regional um, flavor to the to the people that exhibit at the space. But typically, would you say that the artists find you and pursue your gallery and want to be included in your gallery, or is it the other way around where you find them? It's a combination of both. Uh, initially. Uh, I didn't know many of the artists, and I had to just start asking and networking around to find who uh, more of them were, and they definitely didn't know who I was because I didn't have the gallery going. But once you start to uh, get to know artists and you treat them well and they bring you work that is of a good quality and uh, th that relationship develops, then they start to point you in the direction of other artists. So I would say a lot of it is just networking through other artists to initially find a good uh, base. And then from there, uh, we have artists coming to us on a very regular basis, several a week, that would like to be able to get in. So uh, initially, we sought them out, and now they seek us out more. Excellent. Go ahead, Tony. Well, I just think that is so important, and I, I want to go into another area of art, and you may or may not be working with people in this area, but I have been visiting some corporations, and we have a lot of large corporations, and we call some of these, um, you know, the 500 Fortune companies, and some of them and others not. I uh, am particularly impressed with one in Seattle, a company, and it's called Safeco Insurance Company, and they have their own art galleries, and I say that plural because I think they have 125 centers around this country, and they buy uh, art pieces, and their policy is they buy them from local artists. That would be the, you know, the Seattle area. And then in each of these, and they have a curator, and so, and he took me through their works. And so when you go into the workplace at these different places around the country and they move them around, there's a great appreciation. I'd like to get your reaction to that. Are you in contact with any corporations do these kind of things? And every bar from their works, or, or at least react to the fact, is this a great idea for corporations to become involved in? promoting the arts also. I think that's a wonderful idea, and I would like to see more corporations in our own area um, get involved in that way and promote the arts in that way. I, I think that um, art is, is such a um, marvelous experience for people, even if they're educated in it or trained in it. It, it always draws an emotional reaction, um, most of it pleasant. And it's a benefit to any company to have art in their facility, particularly original works that are not reproductions or prints. Um, it, it says something about their um, dedication to their community, and it also says something about their education and influence with culture. Um, we had a couple years ago a woman come in and buy a piece um, for Enron. Oh, and really? actually, I was, <laughs> I thought one of the saddest things about the collapse of Enron was that um, they bought, they did buy a lot of art. 
and the fast cows were actually hugely hugely involved in the arts in Houston so it was kind of a sad thing when that all collapsed I mean I you can see that it, it could be an influence you know it, it, one way or the from other. so many different perspectives one is that like the example I gave in Seattle where it encourages local artists to do more because they the company purchases the art from them so a lot of artists are in addition to this creativity and love for it, make their living doing this. So it, That's right. it really causes the, uh, the work to grow. And then secondly, it would seem to me that the companies, by having this, have something for their workers to appreciate. And you know, the more quality you have at your workplace, the happier you are as a person too. So Steve, would you like to respond to any of that? Oh, I think it really is great in your work environment. Uh, having quality artwork around uh, always, uh, you know, it stimulates your own uh, thoughts and creativity, but it's great conversation with coworkers and clients and people that come in. Uh, I have one client who, uh, out of the University uh, Research Park, who always uh, brings in art and rents pieces from me, and he puts pieces out there that are real thought-stimulating, intriguing pieces, and he, each time uh, at the end of like a three-month period when he brings them back, he'll talk about all the different comments he got, and it, it's great to uh, see that happening. Erna Reinhardt. Many of the large cities that I've traveled to throughout the United States will have public art and I think that that always enhances the quality of life for those community members and Coeur d'Alene actually has adopted this a few years ago we had a city council person that was a very big friend of the arts and advocated that a certain portion of monies that were brought into the community be allocated for some public art pieces which have really enhanced our community and have um, struck up some dialogues that were both positive and 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 maybe negative but whatever um, tell us a little bit about I think Janet you have had a little bit of experience with that program how that works and maybe a little bit about some of the pieces that we have in our community that are from that program uh, the Coeur d'Alene Arts Commission has uh, become really very vital in the last five years and uh, in in renovating our city and in developing our city as you said there's a certain percentage of I believe it's permits like sidewalk permits and construction permits uh, go to the arts and that's how Steve and I first met we were part of a, a group that was put together to select um, uh, piece for there actually is going to be nine locations along Northwest Boulevard for public art I think they've only placed one at this point there's places along the Centennial Trail and they uh, do a regional call to artists and it was overwhelming the response that we got it was a very it was a very difficult process to go through process of elimination uh, getting down to finalists and listening to their presentations and um, it, it just enhances a community and, and makes it alive and like you say, you get reactions one way or another, but you get reactions, <laughs> and that means people are involved. So that's a, that's a good thing. Exactly. Steve, do you know off the top of your head some of the examples of those projects that you could sure. share with the viewers? Go ahead. First, I thought it was great. Coeur d'Alene is the first city in Idaho to adopt that 1.33 percent for public arts. And the first project they did was uh, there were three uh, dead trees in the city park that they uh, took and did uh, carvings uh, of those are some beautiful wood carvings down there in the park then the next uh, project was the uh, police station where David Clemens did an eagle he was chosen that flies up uh, above the building uh, the third project was the one Janet had mentioned earlier which was Northwest Boulevard and David Govader and um, Keith Powell, Powell uh, were chosen to do the feathers. And then the next one was the fire station. Uh, Heidi Wastwe did a bronze plaque that is on the entry door there. Uh, currently, uh, there are seven, seven, seven stone uh, benches that are being carved mm -hmm. by various artists around town that will go in public park spaces. Uh, one at each, en each entrance, I believe, to Tubbs Hill, one on Independence Point. Uh, I, I can't remember where they all are, but they'll all be usable, ADA-compliant uh, stone benches. Okay. And these were from stones that were thrown away out on city property. Uh, so the materials were free. Uh, and 
They've got a, another They've got uh, a stump project going on right now. And is the too. photographer out on the Centennial Trail? Yeah, mm -hmm. David Clements did two pieces there. Yeah. So this is yeah. a great example of how the city, I think, was very creative in trying to set aside some, some funds that could finance these projects for, that are public art. I just thought that was wonderful. I think there's two lessons here that are really important uh, from our, my perspective of the program is that we love to give ideas out to others in the communities that have not done this yet. This might be a wonderful opportunity for them to think about and consider doing what you've just described in their community. And the second point is, uh, in, in, in the form of a question, is when tourists come, we have many wonderful people coming and visiting here and, and our great friends in Canada. Uh, we recently did a symposium on celebrating Canadian-American friendship. and. When they come to our community, they don't automatically know where those places are. Do you have that information, or where do they get the information so they can visit some of those art sites? A lot of what we uh, promote at the gallery are what's happening in the region, what's available in the region. We get mailings from uh, different organizations that are presenting things and different galleries whose shows are running. and. We always have that uh, information available to anybody. We, we like being the arts information center. It's fun. Yes. And we're also putting together a brochure right now for uh, the galleries that are in the downtown area, and all of those galleries will have uh, a stack of those brochures. And they are also in uh, the kiosks up and down the I-90 corridor. Uh, so from a gallery standpoint, you can uh, pick them up at numerous places. I'm always giving advice when not asking, <laughs> so <laughs> I might suggest this is such a wonderful idea that, that maybe promoting this partnership <coughs> across state lines and all those issues is it also great artwork at other places in Montana and Washington, Oregon, Idaho and in Canada that in the future sharing some of that even though you may not have enough money to have hand out to everyone if they could just have a brochure in each of these where when they visit us they could see them or when, our, when people here leave to go to Spokane or Montana they could see them so maybe down that line that would be wonderful too. Uh, just uh, as much as the people can know about the great art in the whole region. My next question is, is the beauty uh, that we've talked about in the eye of the beholder. And Erna talked about some of the controversy that uh, certainly the entrance Northwest Boulevard has created some great letters to the editor on both sides. Uh, when people come in, and, and I, I guess I'd just ask you to give some advice. And you know, some people love abstract, abstract art and, and some they like um, very specific things that they can identify as uh, people or, or flowers or whatever it may be. What do you say to people when they have these disagreements or when someone comes in, is it okay to say, you know, I don't like that or I do like this? And do you encourage that kind of dialogue with people to, to express their emotions and feelings? We love to hear dialogue back uh, from either side. The, to get us to talk about art, that's, we're sitting there waiting, <laughs> hoping somebody will. It doesn't uh, have to all be positive. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. and. Art is definitely, uh, you know, a personal mm -hmm. uh, feeling of what you like and don't like, or what you've been exposed to, or if you know the background of an artist, you develop an appreciation for them. Whereas maybe the first time you see a piece, it, you you may not have that appreciation. Talk to us about it. Ask questions. We love to share and show more pieces and and hear what you like. So. Uh, I, one more thing before I go back to Erna, we, ha we have a wonderful thing here at North Idaho College and that is on, on the green, they have the president's piece that is that the college gets a piece yeah. or, or I guess we purchase a piece uh, at the, on the green and, and one of the uh, and, and wonderful artists but there was one piece that was in the president's office and there were about five of us and we had the most fascinating dialogue about this piece that hung there for that one year. So I, I know what you're talking about but that's healthy and, and I was just hoping that you would react to that, Erna Reinhardt. Everyone always has an opinion, right? Um, there's one more event that I want to talk about real quickly while you guys are both here, and it's one that I think you're both involved in called Art in the Making, which uh, is an event, I believe, that happens periodically in our community where you invite artists to come to a central location and go ahead, finish uh, my I'll, sentence. I'll let Steve <laughs> talk about that because that's, that's Steve's uh, brainchild. It's and a great it's, event. It's a wonderful event. Yes. Tell us about that. We uh, have put it on, I believe, 17 times now in the last five years. And it basically came about when there are a group of us that get together up at Terry Lee's studio for the last seven or eight years, and we draw from and paint from life up there and sculpt. And so about every 
three to six months, we'll go down into the plaza shops uh, in the big atrium there, set up a stage and a partition in the middle, and on one side we'll do a half hour changing pose, and uh, six or eight of us will put up the drawing horses and draw from those poses, and then on the other side we'll put up uh, one pose for three hours. Uh, the person does get a break every half hour, but they resume the same pose when they come back, and the painters will put up their French easels and paint on that side, and this is all to the accompaniment of like a live string trio. We usually use the Coeur d'Alene string trio who are fabulous musicians and basically do a three hour performance and have the public come watch and the great comments are that uh, people love to be able to see that here you have six or eight people painting the exact same model with completely different <laughs> results and all can be equally wonderful, but in their own particular way, and it's uh, a really fun event. We will put it on again the last weekend in February, or excuse me, in September, as part of the Arts from the Heart event. Now, where is that located for people who want to go there? The Coeur d'Alene Plaza Shops is at 210 Sherman, Sherman Avenue in downtown. It's on the main street of Sherman. Yes. Uh, you spoke of music, and um, when you're doing a, a show, uh, and uh, music in the background, is, is there some coordination between the, the type of show that's going on and the type of music that you would select? Um, sometimes. Um, uh, the most fun we've had is a couple different uh, partnerships we had. We did one this February with the Lionel Hampton um, School of Jazz and they sent up a quartet which was just wonderful and it was really wonderful to partner with them and have these senior performing students, you know, in the gallery and they had their tux on and music was wonderful and we had a performance last summer by Opera, Opera Plus, did a little venue of some uh, music they were going to be performing and uh, that's been a lot of fun and we've had a, we had a uh, duo in there one <coughs> evening. We had a student today and on his cell phone music came on. He said, do you like this music? And I said, it all depends on when it is. I said, you wouldn't have it at mass on Sunday. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, appropriate time for appropriate music. I think he got a real kick out of that. Uh, but uh, we want to thank you. Time is up and we want to say so many thanks to Steve Gibbs and Janet Torline for the two weeks that you've been with us. It has been wonderful to have you here and uh, good luck in what you're doing. And, and ladies and gentlemen, we've been so pleased to bring you from the art spirit this wonderful two-week show dealing with art. And please be with us again next week at the same time. We'll discuss another issue. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. Recorded on the campus of North Idaho College, Public Forum is the longest-running in-house college production on PBS. Each episode is pre-recorded live and is an educational outreach from North Idaho College. Please join us at this same time next week for another edition of Public Forum on this public television station.